Hey, what's up all of you beautiful subscribers? Welcome back to the Jack Chapel Show. So we got another entrepreneurship and investing related video for you today. We're gonna talk about Robert Herjavec, some of the advice that you know, he was given to build his company up to you know several hundred million dollars in valuation. By the way, Robert Herjavec is the guy you would know him from Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, the Canadian version of uh, Shark Tank. That was first, by the way. Dragon's Den was first. And uh, uh, so we're gonna talk about some of the pieces of advice for invest investing in entrepreneurship that he gives to young people. So we're gonna talk about his number one point here. The most important thing in business is sales, is what he says here. And guess what, I, I kinda of half agree with him. Some people say it's marketing, some people say it's the product. I believe it's sales. And he has a really good reason for this actually. So sales, think about this, think about this. Look at this, whatever's on frame in this camera. We got you know this thing here, we got the whiteboard, we got the whiteboard stand, we got the wall, we got the floor, we got lights, we got you know, lighting, all this stuff here. Think about this. Everything in this frame, wherever you are at home, everything was bought and sold. Everything around you, unless you were in the middle of a forest, it, which was probably land that was acquired from the British or something, or unless it's you know Christopher, I don't know, whatever. Unless you're in the middle of a forest somewhere, everything around you was bought and sold, including public parks that was bought and sold by the city. The bench that you're on, bought and sold. Um, you know, think about this: the whiteboard. One company, the whiteboard stand, a different company, the light there, a different company, this wood flooring, one company, the tile, a different company, the drywall, different company, paint, different company, bought and sold, all of it. The person who came in here and did this, different company, uh, than the person who actually paint, than the you know paint that we actually bought, you know the hydro, the lights, everything here is bought and sold, everything around you. That's why sales is the most important. And guess what? Selling something in your life as a whole. I mean, this isn't just business. You know, everything you want in life is bought through, is done through selling something, selling yourself. So if you're going, if you want to become, get a, go get a supermodel or go get a wife or, or husband, whatever it may be, you have to sell yourself to them that you would be a good partner. It's all a sales job in some sort of way. Now you have to be honest and everything too, but you know, you have to sell yourself to other people. If you want a, a good job and you don't want to start a business, you want to, you have to sell yourself that you would be a good employee. To the, you have to sell it to the boss that you'd be a good employee. You have to, you know, just sales is the most important thing in business, and it's one of the more important things in life as a whole. All right, everything revolves around sales here. I agree with that. So we're going to move on to number two, which is never complain. Never complain about your situation. I mean, Robert Herjavec was an immigrant that came over here from Croatia, poor family. Eventually, they worked their way up and so on, but uh, you know, when he was a kid, he would talk about you know, being in a tiny 400 square foot apartment. Now he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, so he has that good perspective about what it's like to be poor and then work your way up. But one of the worst things you can do is actually, one of the worst kinds of people is that the spoiled kids that are born with like inherit a billion dollars, they usually don't turn out too well. Uh, they usually turn out, and there's also the people that get like fame and money too quick. I mean, the lottery winners and people that get superstardom really quick, like a lot of celebrities out there, uh, you know, that's, they usually don't do too well either in terms of uh, long-term success. But anyways, never complain about your situation. So let's say you're low on money. You're low on money, you need $1,000, you, or you need, you know, let's say you need $100 to pay the hydro bill. The, we call it hydro, it's the electricity bill for you guys in the United States. You need 100 bucks, you're short 100, 100 bucks. Probably 50 bucks, we're gonna say 100. Uh, so what do you think you should do? Do you think that you should sit around and complain about how you owe 100 bucks and sit there and watch some TV and watch some Netflix and hopefully your problems go away? Or do you think that it's a better solution to try and find a way to make 100 bucks? Or, you know, potentially negotiate the $100 down from, to $50 because, you know, whatever. There's different ways to go about it, but do you think it's a better solution to try and actively try and fix the problem or to complain about it? This goes for anything in life, not just money too. Well, if you don't like the way you look, you, don't, you want a six pack, but um, you just, you're, have a gut right now. Are you gonna complain about having a gut or are you gonna go out there and, and do, uh, go run five kilometers and do some sit-ups and eat properly? Don't complain about your situation. Just do what, if you don't like anything about your life, go out there and fix it. It's all on you. All right, we're gonna move on here to number three. Number three, which is keep on going. All right, so keep on going. So I'm going to tell you the story about Robert Herjavec. I'm reading his book right now. So he talks about how you know he uh, he came home one day from work or school or whatever. He was like nine, or I guess school nine, ten, eleven years old, something like that. And uh, he came into his parents fighting. 
They were fighting, his dad was yelling at his mom, his mom was crying, he didn't really know why. And so he, uh, his dad said, look at what she did, and then apparently he, sh he shows Robert a, a vacuum cleaner that cost whatever it was, I don't know how much it was, 100 bucks, whatever it was. And they were poor, they didn't have the money for that vacuum. This would set them, this was like part of their savings that set them back significantly. All right, so the dad got really, really mad at the mom, but guess what? Instead of just sitting and complaining and, and being miserable, the dad's just like, you know what, we're gonna have to work a little bit extra this month, and we're gonna have to probably cut out whatever, some more expenses, even if it's a dollar here, a dollar there, and we're gonna fix this and we're gonna make it up in the next month. That was the solution to the problem. As I remember it though, it might, it might be, I read, I read that portion of the book about a week ago, so that's what I remember it being. But keep moving is what I'm trying to say here. If you have a big obstacle, a big roadblock, a big downturn, keep moving. Do not stop and wallow in your misery. That is, I mean, I talk about how some people, whether it's whatever you're going through, if it's financially, if it's career, you get fired, if it's a relationship, you get dumped, keep going. There are people that get dumped and they just get stuck for five years or 10 years and they never get out of it. And they just get stuck in a rut and all of a sudden their life goes by and they've wasted it sitting on the couch doing nothing all day because they're so sad that someone hurt their feelings. Guess what? That's life. That is life. And unfortunately, you know, there's... I, you know, I, I understand why people want safe spaces, okay? If there's any sort of actual physical violence that actually hurts people, that's not good. You know, have a place where you can go and like actually be safe, especially if it's any sort of bad, terrible remarks, like really, really racist stuff. Like, okay. But if it's in any sort of, you know, microaggressions or something, just guess what? Take it and keep moving. Conflict can be good, and conflict is one of the ways that it helps you grow as a person and as an entrepreneur. If you cannot deal with stress and little downturns in your life, you will not be super successful into the future. If little tiny things affect your life in a negative way and screw up your entire day like someone's tone of voice or something when they talk to you, I mean, that is, that's going to kill, that's going to kill your career, your business, whatever you're doing in life. You cannot stress over the little things, the little things, just if a little bad things happens to you or a big thing, just keep on going and your life will be a lot better in the long run. So we're going to move on here to number, or I think that was number three here, right? Keep on going. I didn't write that down here. Uh, keep going. Number four is da, 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 over deliver. Whatever you're selling in your business, make sure you over deliver. Uh, something I had to learn too is that, so for example, if you are, um, make sure you over deliver for your customers. So if they pay $10 for something, make sure that you get, they get $20 of value. If it's $30 that they're, you're selling it for, make sure they get $50 in value. Make sure you over deliver in value and they will come back and potentially trust you more and purchase more from you. Whatever your business is, if you're selling cars, if you're selling insurance, if you're selling houses, and real estate, that's specific too. If you're a really good real estate agent, people will use you forever. If you are, do really good on your first time and people really like you, they will use you to buy their next five houses or sell their next five houses. And you can make a lot of money just from being really good and over delivering on your first go. Okay, we're gonna move on here to number five. Number five is adapt. Adapt to whatever your situation is in life, in business, whatever it may be. If your company is an, in a company that, if, you, if your business revolved around MP3 players in 2002, you have to adapt or you died. If you were selling MP3 players in 2002, guess what? Those aren't really around anymore too much. Or if you were a Walkman sale, sales thing, a Sony Walkman person, I mean, sure, they're making half a comeback right now, but they aren't really. Your company, um, if you didn't evolve from a, a, from a Walkman company to a MP3 company to a iPhone or to a smartphone company, then you're dead. You have to adapt as the market adapts, as the society adapts, whatever it is. And even in life too. I mean, adapt, again, it's like if, uh, for example, if you get fired or maybe you, your company says that, look, you're a salesperson, but we're going to need you to do a little bit of marketing and some actual like design stuff, adapt or you lose your job. That's just kind of the way it is. So you have to adapt in everything, in life and business and so on. So we're gonna move on here to number six. Number six is you are in control. You know what's funny is that, <laughs> I, I, this isn't the chicken or the egg thing anymore. I, um, I used to think that 
there's, there's a giant correlation between people who are successful and people who think that they have control over their life. If you're successful, odds are um, you think that you have a lot of control over your life. And people that aren't successful think that they have no control over their life. And for a while, I was like, okay, is this chick, is this a, you know, what came first? Are you successful? Are you, do you think you have control over your life because you're successful? Or are you successful because you think you have control over your life? And it is the latter. It is, you can, it is, there's a higher correlation between thinking you have control over your life and becoming successful in the future than the other way around. All right? So, if you think that you have control over your life and that your life is not dictated by your boss, it's not dictated by your teacher, it's not dictated by your parents, odds are you're going to have a more successful and happy life in the future. This is not a, th that is how it works. The chicken came first. All right? This settles the debate. The chicken came first. And this is why you see so often, I mean, like every entrepreneur thinks that they have control over, had control over their life and always have and always will. Um, and that's just kind of the way it is. So just knowing you guys out there that you have a lot more control over your life than you think in business, career, investing, whatever. Just know that you have control over everything. You can leave your job right now and go get another job. You can leave your job right now and start a business. You can, whatever, quit your, stop your business and go buy a farm and grow your own food so you don't have expenses. Start a, you know, have your house heated by fire. Chop some wood. All right, <laughs> you have control over your life. You can go live in the forest if you want to. No one's going to find you. Go build a little cabin in a forest. Like you have control, you can do that. Who's going to stop you? Sure, like they they can find you, right? But they're not going to. I mean, you could go build a cabin, yeah, like in the middle of the boreal forest if you really want to. Um, now, obviously, there are certain things that you can't do. But what I'm just trying to say here is that, you know, just because uh, you, know, you have more control over the, of your life than you think. You can pick up right now and go move to Saskatchewan. You can go move to Montana. You can go move to LA. If you really want to, what's going to stop you? Your boss? They can't. They can't legally stop you. The government? I mean, if you've gone to jail, then maybe. But <laughs> if you have a clean record, you can go move wherever the hell you want. That's just the way it is. You have control over your life. And just realize that you can, you can, you're capable of more than you think. And you have more control than you think. So I think that's going to wrap this video up. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of all this. Um, yeah, if you like this talk, you're going to like the Wealth Accelerator. So check that out in the link down below. And I'd like to thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people. And I'll see you guys in the next video.